It's funny how people can underestimate the consequences of their actions. My name is Ryan. The best way to describe me is to say I'm a lover and a man with mild manners who gives his wife everything she wants. It took me two marriages, but now I finally realize that being reserved and giving everything to the one you love can lead to contempt and disrespect. That will never happen again. These spoiled women think they can do something and hide it from their partners. As long as they never find out, all is well. They hide their guilt in various ways until they get caught, and then they suddenly regret it and explain that they didn't want their spouse to find out and get hurt. Do they even hear themselves speak? What are we supposed to think when they say they never meant for you to find out? Do they realize that they are admitting they are doing it behind your back and are only sorry they got caught? What an insult that is. I am convinced that these women cannot understand normal thinking. Sandy and I met after we broke up from a dysfunctional relationship. She spent three years with her boyfriend, and Billy left her for a younger, more attractive girl. Sandy left the relationship hurt and with self-esteem issues because of being dumped by the man she loved. She never got over Billy, and that always bothered me on some level. My name is Ryan, and I'm six years older than Sandy. I was married for five years to an amazingly hot, sexy woman who rocked my world. I was madly in love with her and expected to spend the rest of my life with my ex-wife, Charlotte. However, she had made several lovers behind my back at a time when I was completely enamored with her. It took me a year of her cheating to find out about her infidelity, and it hurt me deeply. I left her and swore I would never let it happen again. After that, I realized that trust would be an issue for me in any new relationship. Sandy and I knew about each other's baggage. I helped Sandy overcome her self-esteem issues. She went to the gym and gave her body an amazing figure. She spent all her free time shopping for new clothes, spending hours at the beauty parlor and on the tennis courts. With my help and support, she transformed into a confident, beautiful woman. In turn, knowing my story, Sandy worked hard to help me overcome my confidence issues. She always let me know that I was her one and only love and how lucky she was to have found me. Every day, she made sure to tell me how much she loved me and made sure all my wishes were fulfilled. The sex was still great, and we had sex at least four times a week. We still kissed and cuddled on the couch and loved each other. We even started talking about kids. We were each other's soulmates. Life was good, at least I thought so. A week after our sixth anniversary, my world turned upside down. I noticed my wife wearing a dress I hadn't seen before and looking spectacular, which was odd for a late weekday morning. Now, I wasn't spying on my wife, but we have a video surveillance system at home that I sometimes watch when I'm bored at work. I like to watch our dog Brandy, my little dachshund, as she has become a stress reliever after my stressful job as a bond broker. However, when I saw the live video feed that morning, I was curious. There was the love of my life in a very short, sexy red dress and very high heels. Her hair was styled and her makeup was amazing. I hadn't seen her so sexy in years, which made my stomach twist and I was worried. I immediately called my loving wife to see if I could find out what she was up to. I dialed her number on my cell phone. Hi, baby. Just sitting here thinking about you. How's your day going? Tennis today? Hey, honey, I miss you. There's nothing scheduled for today. No tennis today because Kara hurt her ankle, so I'm taking the day off. Oh, that's too bad. I know how much you love to play. What are you going to do then? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have anything planned. Maybe I'll go to the gym. Would you like to meet for lunch? I can stop by the house and pick you up. That's so sweet, babe, but not today. I'm a little bloated and I'm not really hungry right now. I'll just have a protein shake at the gym. I'll see you tonight. I love you, baby. I said goodbye without my usual I love you. I'm sure she caught that because I always say I love you before we end our calls. She lied to me and I need to find out why. Of course, some things die hard. And even though I trusted Sandy after all these years, I still had a GPS tracker in her car that I rarely used. I had originally put it there for security, but unfortunately now I was using it to spy on my wife. As soon as I hung up the phone, I walked out of my office, walked to my car and turned on her tracker. She was heading downtown, and I drove in that direction. My office was near downtown, and 15 minutes later I caught up with her, noticing her pulling into the parking garage. 
I parked on the street and waited in the doorway for her to come out of the garage. Five minutes later, my beautiful wife, in her high heels and sexy dress, was heading toward Fellini's, an upscale restaurant. I stood there, feeling my stomach clench, and prayed I hadn't been duped by another woman. When I saw her waving to a man in front of the restaurant, I knew I was in trouble. I scooted closer, trying to stay out of sight, and saw him greet her with a kiss. They exchanged a few words as he took her hand and walked inside. I quickly crossed the street and watched through the window as they stood in front of the hostess with their arms around each other's waist. I noticed Sandy leaning lovingly on his shoulder. Tears began to fill my eyes until anger rose in me. I wiped my eyes, pulled out my phone, and started taking some pictures through the window. As I started snapping them, I saw him turn to Sandy and kiss her passionately. I took some pictures just as she was responding to him with a reciprocal kiss. My heart broke when she put her arms around his neck and pulled him even deeper. At that moment, I turned on the video camera and captured their loving kiss. The combination of pain in my heart and rage in my head led me down a dark path. Before I could decide what to do, the hostess led them to their table. My blood boiled when I recognized the man, and it was Billy, her ex-boyfriend. The guy who dumped her and ruined her life, and now she was back in his arms. She knew how I felt about him and that I had made it clear to her that she should never speak to him again. She clearly did not agree with my wishes. My anger took over when I realized that in just the last hour she had lied to me, dressed sexily to meet her ex, kissed him passionately, and is spending the entire day with him. That level of disrespect and humiliation was unacceptable, and it was something I could no longer live with. The promise I made to myself after my last marriage prevented me from being patient and accepting that level of disrespect. It was over, and all that was left was to hear more lies and excuses from my soon-to-be ex-wife. Still full of anger, I drove back to the office and finished the day at my desk trying to figure out how this could have happened again. After feeling sorry for myself for the next five hours, I headed home, already knowing my next move. I wondered if Sandy would tell me the truth about her day, or continue to deceive me, as it would make my final move easier. With a lot of effort, I was able to suppress my anger and drove home to face the dissolution of my marriage. As I turned into the driveway of my house, I felt myself crying over the loss of the woman I loved and respected. Sandy was setting the table with a delicious dinner, was dressed in a nice outfit, and was acting very affectionate toward me when I entered the kitchen. She gave me a big kiss and told me how much she missed me. Typical cheating wife bullshit, I thought. The bitch was trying to ease her guilt and make it up to me by showing more love than she had in the last six months. As much as I tried to act normal, it obviously wasn't working when she looked at me and asked, Honey, are you okay? Did anything happen? I poured myself a tall glass of Mr. Daniels, tried to smile and relax, and said, I'm fine, it's just been a busy day. Let me get changed and cleaned up for dinner, and I'll be down shortly. In the bedroom, I changed and sat on the bed, finishing my drink and letting the elixir wash over my body. After calming down, I went down to the kitchen and saw my beautiful wife, smiling and happy, with dinner set on the table. She was in a great mood, clearly happy with the day she had spent with her boyfriend. As we sat there together, I struck up a conversation. This is a wonderful dinner, Sandy, and you dress so beautifully for me today, thank you. I love you, honey, and I love cooking for you, she said with a satisfied smile. We sat in awkward silence for a few minutes while we ate. I noticed Sandy looking at me, wondering what was bothering me. Did she feel guilty? Would she tell me the truth about today? I would find out in the next few minutes. So, tell me about your day and what you did for dinner, I said with no threat in my voice. Well, after you called, I went to the gym for a few hours, ate a protein bar, and then came home to make you dinner. Pretty boring day, she offered as an answer. She saw my face and noticed my eyes filled with tears and quickly lowered her gaze to her plate. In a quiet voice, I said, So, Sandy, how are we going to do this? Do we just meet with the lawyers or do you want to see a counselor first? What are you talking about, honey? About divorce, of course, I replied. Stop being stupid. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the end of our marriage, divorce, separation, figuring out how we can do this and still be friends. I don't understand. Why do you want a divorce? Really? 
I'll give you a few minutes to think about your question before I answer. Suddenly she became nervous. Her hands nervously rubbed her glass, and she no longer looked me in the eye. She was silent for a few minutes. Were you following me tonight? No, I lied, knowing it didn't really matter, but for some reason I didn't want her to know. Why are you asking me if I followed you? Is there anything I should know? I could tell she was still confused and didn't know what to say. Like all cheaters, they deny it. As expected, she said nothing was going on and she didn't understand anything. Why are you asking me about the divorce? With a sad expression on my face, I looked into her eyes for a long time, hoping she would open up and tell me the truth. After a long silence, I said, Well, let me show you what's bothering me, Sandy. I opened my phone and showed her one picture of her and Billy kissing when they met outside the restaurant. That picture could be explained as a friendly kiss as a greeting. I didn't want to show her the other pictures until I heard more of her lies. Her jaw dropped and I saw tears come to her eyes. She'd made excuses, of course. Honey, I can explain. It was just a hello kiss. Nothing happened. How did you get this picture? So, how's Billy doing these days, baby? I'll tell you how I got this picture. I was crossing the street coming out of a software store when I thought I noticed you walking hand in hand into a restaurant. I crossed the street and walked over to the window to see you standing there with him putting one arm around you. My first thought was that it wasn't you, but of course I was wrong. It was you. My second thought was, why is she wearing that sexy dress and high heels? She never dresses like that for me anymore. Then I noticed that you were with Billy and everything immediately fell into place. I started taking some pictures just as you leaned over and kissed him, and that's how I got this picture. In the next picture I showed her, she had her arms around his neck and her short dress was scooting up to her ass, which was on display. You really looked sexy in that dress and your hair and makeup looked spectacular. Were you on your way to a modeling shoot or were you getting a job as a prostitute? Tell me, why did you dress like that for him? I can't remember the last time you wore something so sexy for me. She put her head in her hands and cried, and I stared at her intently, waiting for an answer. When she remained silent, I continued. You know my new S22 phone has an amazing camera, and it allows me to zoom in with great clarity. Look, let me show you, I said, moving closer to her left arm, which was wrapped around Billy's neck. I zoomed in on her ring finger, which now had no wedding rings on it, and brought the image up to her face. No wedding rings today? Funny. I don't remember you ever taking them off in all the time we've been together. Today must have been a really special day. Now, do you see why I'm talking about divorce, honey? You lied to me this morning about your day. You took off your wedding rings. You dressed like a whore to meet your old lover and lied to me again about your day a few minutes ago. You sit here and keep lying to my face and telling me you went to the gym today and ate nothing for lunch. You put on your sexiest outfit for your ex-lover and spent the day with him while I work on making our lives better. You broke your promise to never see him again. You kissed and flirted with another man in public. You treated me like a fool and just lied to me. I don't know if you slept with him tonight or whatever, but it really doesn't matter. Whatever you say, in my mind, it will be a lie. But what you did showed me that you don't keep your promises, and you will lie to me to cover things up. You tried your best to look good for your ex-lover. You were intimate with him and gave up on your marriage by taking off your rings, and then you lied to me over and over again. Seems to me that's a good reason for divorce, and you know it. Sandy was shaken to the core. She had just realized that she hadn't really thought this through, and the way Ryan was talking it all out made her feel like a cheating wife. Up until this point, she just considered it a little teasing and flirting, nothing serious. For the first time since Billy had approached her, she realized that this had escalated into an emotional relationship and could easily be seen as cheating on her husband, albeit not physical, but certainly emotional. She was still crying and knew that if this had been her husband's affair, she would have behaved the same way. What have I done? She said to herself. Her heart ached and she felt nauseous in her stomach because of the pain she had caused her husband. She had to get through to Ryan and save this marriage. Ryan, you have to believe me, nothing happened. We went our separate ways after dinner, but you have to believe me, nothing happened. It was just lunch, she said, sobbing and looking for a way out. I realize now what it looks like, 
and if things had been different, I would feel the same way you do now, and I'm so sorry. Can you please try to forgive my stupidity? It's beyond stupid since you did this to your ex-lover, the one person you promised to avoid. Can you explain why you dressed like that for him without your wedding rings? Can you explain why you held hands and kissed him? Can you explain why you kept lying to my face? Tell me, darling, does it mean nothing to you? And yes, if it were the other way around, I'm sure you'd feel very differently. Ryan, I know this looks bad, but I took my rings off while I was painting my nails. I forgot them when I realized I was late. It sounds lame and I can't apologize for it, but I can only promise you that I wasn't trying to hide them. He knows we're married. He knows you're married, but he still wants to see you and kiss you passionately in public, and you agreed to everything. That's a lame excuse. Dating your ex-lover behind my back and lying about it is, in my opinion, a deal breaker. A little annoyed, she said, I'm not sure what to say other than it was just lunch with a friend and I just wanted to look nice. Well, it doesn't matter. You lied to me and went out with him. What, do you think I'm a complete idiot? I know this meeting should have been planned ahead of time, and you kept it from me without even bothering to mention it. And when I saw the two of you kissing like that, it was clear you wanted more than I could give you. Ryan, honey, we can't get divorced over something like this. Nothing happened. He was in town and he asked me to lunch. I know I shouldn't have gone, and I know how jealous you are, but we had a long relationship. I figured one lunch after not seeing him for so many years wouldn't be a big deal. I guess I dressed special to show him what he was missing when he left me. I kind of wanted to tell him right to his face about what he lost and how happy I was. It still hurts when I remember how he left me back then, and I wanted a little revenge. Yes, I kissed him, but it wasn't a romantic kiss, but more like two friends just meeting or saying goodbye. You have to believe me. I don't want anything to do with him. Please, baby, let's work this out. I'll do whatever you want. You will? That doesn't mean anything? You'll do anything I want? Hearing that she had a chance to save the marriage, she smiled, wanting to hear what she had to do, and said, Yes, of course. I'll do whatever you want me to do, baby. Okay, Sandy, I'll give you one chance and one chance only. I just have one request. Let me see your cell phone. Why? She looked at me with a puzzled expression. Well, Sandy, if that doesn't mean anything, then let me see your cell phone. I want to see if there are any text messages for it and what you two have been saying to each other. No, you don't need to see that, she said, looking at the floor. She knew that if I read the messages, it would hurt me and reveal a lot of things she didn't want me to see. That's exactly what I thought. So let's go back to my original question. How do we want to do this? She started crying and asking me to forgive her and that she would never do it again. This brought back heartbreaking memories of my first marriage. I couldn't believe I was reliving that nightmare again. This time, I wasn't going to believe all the lies and let things continue. Wait, please, wait, Ryan. If I give you the phone, will you promise to give me another chance? You have to know that I love you, and I've never cheated on you before. I may have gotten caught up in a stupid online relationship, and yes, with my ex-lover, but I was stupid and acting like a teenage girl. The flirting and compliments were nice, and it all rubbed off on my ego. I know how childish that sounds. If I give you the phone, you have to promise me you'll give me another chance. I can't do that, Sandy. But I promise you, if you don't give me the phone, we're 100% done. My next action will be to call Mark Wilson, the attorney I've already spoken to, and I'll have him draw up the divorce papers this week. She knew there was no other choice and she knew exactly what I would be reading their romantic texts from the past two months. All she could hope for now was that I realized it was a stupid emotional mistake, and she still belonged to me completely. She still believed that because the sex hadn't happened, I would understand and forgive her. In her mind, she needed to let me know that she had never had physical sex with him or anyone else. When Ryan opened the text messaging app, he saw Sandy sitting with her arms around her head, crying and quietly saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please forgive me for being stupid and an idiot. I love you, Ryan, and there is no one else. The text messages said very different things. The ones that really hit him hard were from Sandy to Bill. I still love you, was the first phrase that cut like a knife. I missed you, was another that triggered his anger. The rest of the day was as one would expect. They discussed old times and how they missed being together, but the last few messages had hit Ryan hard between the eyes. When she told Billy that her marriage was outdated and that she was bored, 
and Billy said that he missed her and couldn't wait for them to be a unit. It hurt so badly that he wanted to scream. Well, that opened my eyes. In the end, I'll forgive you, Sandy, but I'm not staying married to someone I can't trust, and it's clear by your actions that I can't trust you. What I just read is what I expected and something I will not allow myself to live with. Maybe your boyfriend can make your life more exciting, and maybe he'll take you back now that he knows what he's been missing. Sandy, I will miss you, but I will find a woman who wants to be exclusive to me and won't disrespect me with lies and secrets. Ryan, what do I have to do to prove my love to you and make you change your mind? Uh, nothing. When I saw you walking hand in hand with him, standing there and him putting his arms around you and kissing you, my heart broke. Now, knowing that you send pictures of your body and tell him you still love him, and then tell him you're sick of our marriage, it was more than any normal man could take. It's sad, but I feel like all our time together was wasted, and I was nothing but a fool. Working hard, planning a family, taking care of you and our home only to find you dating an ex-lover. Do you realize that if you told me the truth when I asked you about your day, how could I possibly understand it? I mean, I can almost understand what you may have wanted to do based on that story. But the problem is that you kept it from me and lied about it. No, I know that if I hadn't found out, you never would have told me. That's the problem, baby. Tell me I'm wrong and you'd tell me all about your date with your ex-lover after you got home. Don't worry, I already know the answer. Trust, loyalty, and honesty are my core values and you trampled on them without a second thought. You knew how it happened to me in the past, and yet you did it without thinking about us. If you had called me and told me what you were doing, I wouldn't have been happy, but I would have let you go to lunch. Now I have to wonder if you've done this before. If we stayed together, I'd have to wonder if what you're telling me is true. What do you do when I'm not around? Are you with him or with other men? I can't spend my days with these thoughts, and it's not fair to either of us. How can I just forget how easily you lied to me? Yes, kissing him and looking sexy for him is disturbing. Not wearing wedding rings is harmful, but lying and conniving is unacceptable. What I do know is that I'm not going to live like this anymore. Ryan, you're right, and I made a stupid mistake. I lied because I knew you'd be mad, but I had to do it. Even if it was a mistake, I needed a way to calm down. I thought one lunch and I'd get my revenge, no harm, no foul. But now I see what I've done and I'm truly sorry for it. I would never do anything to hurt you, I promise. Can we work on that? I want to be transparent and open like you. My problem is that I never want to hurt anyone and will avoid it if possible. Now I see where not being honest is actually worse. Well, honesty and transparency are the only things that could have saved this marriage. But you weren't transparent and honest until you were forced into submission. The fact that you wouldn't let me read your text messages until you realized you had no other choice decided your fate. Tears rolled down her face as she sat there, knowing how those texts exposed her dishonesty and lack of trust. She knew I wouldn't accept it, and eventually realized that her emotional relationship with another man was just as destructive as if she had gotten him into bed. She told herself she would never make a mistake like that again. Sadly, our happy marriage came to an end. We signed the papers and were officially divorced three months later. We sold the house, split our money, and parted as friends. No reconciliation, no revenge or hatred. All that remained were the smoldering ashes of a once happy marriage destroyed by deceit, lies, and loss of trust. I continued to date, but after getting burned twice, marriage was not in my future. Sandy and Billy hooked up, and two months later, Sandy got pregnant. Billy dumped Sandy as soon as he heard about the pregnancy and told her to take care of it because he wasn't ready for kids. The next morning, Billy disappeared, leaving Sandy with the baby in her arms. I heard from her sister Debbie that she was just a shell of her former self. Her self-esteem was once again compromised. Sandy remained in a constant state of depression when she lost her baby after a violent fall down a long flight of stairs in her apartment. Her life had gone from paradise to sheer hell, all because of her vanity and selfishness. She just couldn't forgive herself for ruining our happy marriage and losing my love and respect. Trust, loyalty, respect. You screw up one, you lose all three.